Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you guys a tutorial on how to get these natural but voluminous brows for those of you who are just starting off in makeup. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so before I get into the actual tutorial part, I wanted to quickly cover a few little bases. So firstly, just like having a very well prepped skin before applying makeup as well as having just a good skincare routine, it impacts how well your skin looks like when wearing makeup. Same thing with brows. So you might be like, well, what do I do to prep my brows? Well, a few things. So if you already have natural black, dark, thick lashes, then um, there's this doesn't really apply to you. This is more for gals that have dirty blonde, light brown, or blonde eyelashes like me over here. So something that I have been doing for a really long time, ever since I was 15, is dyeing my eyebrows. And I think this is absolutely crucial for having natural looking brows. I am not going to go into detail about how to dye them. If you guys are interested in how to do like DIY at home brows, um, let me know. I would love to do a tutorial about that, but I'm not going to go into that because that's just going to be too much time in this video. Plus, some of you guys might not even care about that, so I just... Yeah, I'm just gonna skip that. But anywho, if you do have light brows like I do, it will honestly change your game if you start dyeing it. You will not only save a time when applying, when doing your brows, you will also save money because you're not gonna be using as much product to darken up your brows. And just overall, it's gonna be quicker and stress-free. It's just, ever since I started doing that when I was 15, it has completely changed my brow game. It's just, like honestly, if you guys are light-haired and you don't do it, do it. Trust me, you will not regret it. I wanted to quickly touch on the products. That way I don't have to take pauses when I'm showing you guys the tutorial. So there are really two basic types of applications when it comes to doing your brows. There is wax and there's pencil, which I probably should have taken out, but whatever. So. I personally like to use wax. I started using wax and I think that's probably why it's still my favorite, even though occasionally I still use a pencil. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. But generally I've noticed people that have started with a certain type of product, like a wax or pencil, they kind of tend to have that as their favorite. It's just an interesting observation I made. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, whatever you choose to start off with, it really doesn't make a difference. The reason I personally started with a brow wax is because I love art and I used to paint and draw and do all sorts of things like that. So for me, using like a brush, it was just like a first language. It was just easy and simple and it made sense for me. If using a brush, a tiny little brush freaks you out, then by all means use a pencil they're both equally for me as easy, but it's just something that you will have to test out and see what you prefer. I will be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills pomade. I have been using this for a really long time. Like I said, this was actually the first one that I like started in when it comes to wax. I wasn't this color, of course. Uh, today I will be using a soft brown. That is the shade I am in, but the reason I still use Anastasia Beverly Hills brow stuff, any of their brows is honestly really good, is because, well, first of all, they're not crazy expensive compared to some other like high-end brow products. And on top of that, I really love their shade options. For example, the hardest shade I think to match is a redhead. And um, a little disclaimer, I'm actually a natural redhead. So back when I was whatever age when I started my brows, I don't remember, 16, 15, 18, I don't know. Um, I was still a redhead back then. And auburn color is really hard to find. Usually the color is too orange or too red. And Anastasia Beverly Hills had like that perfect auburn shade that didn't make you look like, like you have clown brows on your face. So I absolutely love their colors. And on top of the colors and the price, the bottles last a really long time. As for tools, I will have to recommend for you guys the e.l.f. 203 brush. It is like a, a thin little precise 
brow brush on one end and a spoolie on the other end. So I think this is super helpful and affordable also because it is so easy just to flip it over and quickly brush your brows and then flip it back and color them in or whatever you need. You don't basically need to buy two things, a spoolie and a brush. So I really like that plus because it's affordable and it works fine. I don't think you need to go spend $30 on a brush. But if you want to, go ahead. My hat's off to you. All right, so with all that blobbering, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so you always wanna start off by brushing out your eyebrows. Some people I know use soap. Some people just, like me, go good old traditional spoolie. But this is absolutely crucial because if you don't brush out your eyebrows, I feel like you, it's a lot harder to find the shape of your eyebrows. So by doing that, not only are you giving your brows volume, you're also lifting and seeing where the heck the shape of your eyebrow is. So using that same e.l.f. brush, I'm gonna start at the arch of my eyebrow and just basically trace the shape. After doing the arch of my eyebrow, I'm gonna go underneath and trace the lower arch of the eyebrow. Then I'm gonna continue on towards the edge of my nose, basically. Another little tip that I like to do, I start a tiny bit higher than my eyebrows. All right, so now going back to your arch, you kind of want to take a tiny bit on your brush, not too much, just a little bit. And for me, I actually have a bald spot. This is a little trick that I do. So I basically kind of fill it in. And again, very little on my, on my brush. I don't want too much. And I also kind of drag down that product. So that way that my bald spot and of course the arch that you don't really have that much hair at looks fuller. Also, when you're wiggling that around, I start to wiggle it towards my nose again. So that way, as you get closer, it pretty much all fades out. And it looks very light and gradual and that way the edges of your brows look a lot, look very light and you can still see all the hairs and they don't look dark or anything. All right, so after that is done, um, flip over to your spoolie and start brushing. This is probably by far the like make it or break it kind of a deal when it comes to brows in my opinion because I think if you skip this step I mean your brows won't look terrible but they won't have that brush stroke kind of like model-esque look that you can see all like I think you can see a difference between this brow and that brow like I'm not even finished but it looks way more natural it's like pretty much like these are your own brows and you didn't touch them at all Versus the other one, the lines are still too harsh. All right, so the next part is the finishing touch, basically. So I'm going to be using my handy dandy Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer Setting <laughs> Mascara. Oh my gosh, this is this was such a mouthful. As you can see, it's adding color and it's also setting your brows up. So this is when you really wanna decide which way you want the hairs to go. After you do the arch, I start moving to the tail, and then lastly, to the edge of my brow, the closest to my nose, because I want the least amount of product to be there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational. And thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to see future videos like these. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts and perhaps ideas for future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.